So this is a continuation on our series on underwater photography. Uh, if you haven't seen the start of that series, click the link up above, go check that out. On today, we are going to start breaking down the systems and showing you the different setups uh, as a whole to obtain different types of images uh, in terms of uh, regular photography, wide angle, macro, and a video setup also. How do we accomplish that? I am by no means seeing, saying this is the only way to do this. There are lots of different equipment uh, choices and lots of photographers and videographers will do this differently than us. We're just giving you our input. Hey guys, welcome back to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle, and if you are a first time viewer to our channel, welcome, we're glad you're here. We are here, our channel is dedicated to talking about, well, everything related to the sport that we love, and if you love it too, if you love to scuba dive, dive into everything scuba, uh, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, we'd love to have you join us for our upcoming episodes. Also, another disclaimer, we are not paid or endorsing any of the companies that we're going to talk about here, we just happen to really enjoy these products. So let's get started. Centrally positioned right here is the underwater housing. We talked about DSLRs and mirrorless camera systems uh, are not designed to be taken underwater without a housing. So the camera lives inside of here, whole series of buttons and knobs and dials that allow you to give you the functionality of that camera under the water. Um, the nice thing about this mirrorless system is it's a pretty small, compact camera, so you have a pretty small, compact housing. Around the housing is a tray. Uh, the tray gives us basically the handles and the ability to control that underwater. You certainly could take the housing all by itself if you're snorkeling or in very shallow water and you don't need any external lights, you could take that all by itself. But the tray gives us the ability to hold on to everything else. From the tray up and down, we've got uh, aluminum uh, eight inch arms, and this gives us the ability to then extend uh, our lights away or turn them and reposition, depending on how and where we're trying to take a, a photograph. It gives us flexibility. We've got, we've got clamps that, are, that can be loosened slightly underwater to uh, allow us to turn and, and move those around. Now, typically when we're diving, uh, we would have some floats attached to these arms. Uh, some people even have solid uh, float arms, and that is because when this whole system is put together, uh, it might weigh between 20 and 30 pounds, depending on what we have attached to it. And so uh, that's very negatively buoyant uh, under the water, and you don't want to have to feel like you're trying to struggle to you know, carry this thing around. So having a neutrally buoyant system or slightly negatively buoyant system that we'll talk about in an upcoming episode. At the end of our arms are the backscatter mini flashes. Uh, these are strobes, but also the nice thing about this flash is it has the ability to give you a focusing light at different intensity levels. So I really dig those. Um, these are pretty small compared to some of the large strobes that you can get, however, remarkably powerful and they can uh, reproduce that strobe very quickly because their recharge time is pretty rapid. So this initial setup is uh, kind of the, the basic setup that you might start out with. Um, the camera is inside the housing. It has the kit uh, lens, which is the 14 by 42 millimeter lens. Uh, and the housing accommodates that lens uh, within it. Uh, when I got the housing, it came with a flat uh, port on the front. Uh, it had a screw system where you could screw in other lenses. I switched that out for this guy, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But with the 14 by 42 millimeter lens and this setup, what can you take photographs of? What can you take video of? Well, uh, I mean, you can get down to pretty small critters, like small crabs. Um, you may not be able to get that super macro uh, close-up with this lens system. Uh, it'll certainly allow you to take pictures uh, up to maybe the size of something like a large watermelon or basketball size within a reasonable uh, frame size. Uh, once we start getting up into larger critters, like a shark uh, or a manta ray, um, this system, because of the uh, inability of that lens to accommodate uh, 
uh, that type of uh, width of image is going to struggle. And uh, you're going to have to be a long ways away from that animal to be able to fit the whole thing in the frame. Um, on the back side here, we have a carrying cable. Uh, this is simply because it's a heavy system. And so getting, walking into the water or having someone hand it down from the boat or handing it back up into the boat, we want to have some way that we can handle the system without grabbing the external components. However, this does come off with some bolt snaps and typically once I'm underwater, I'm going to take that off. I'm going to clip it off to me or stick it in a BCD pocket or something. So it is out of the way. So this 14 to 42 millimeter lens, perfect for things like small crabs, butterfly fish, uh, larger puffer fish. Perfect for those size of uh, creatures. But what if you want to take a picture of a big old shark or a giant manta ray? Tricky to fit it all in the frame with a 14 to 42 millimeter lens. So you are going to think about moving to a wide angle system. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Click the link up above. Thank you.